All right, so let's regroup and take a look at the big picture, think about the situation. So, so far with the scope, we verified that ignition system is solid. Injector system, solid. No shorted injectors. Fuel pressure is solid. The uh, mass airflow sensor, or the volume airflow sensor, seems to be responding. We don't know if that's a, you know an appropriate response or not. So that's um, basically where we're headed now is the amount of air. So the computer is able to control the injectors and the ignition and everything else. But as the engine warms up and the idle drops, what happens to the intake manifold vacuum? That's right, it goes up. And that's where vacuum leaks can really present themselves and in this case you know on a modern car your fuel trims might jack up through the roof but the car will stay running here I don't think it has that capability and on the oxygen sensor we saw it was running just flat line lean until you raised the RPM up and then it went to closed loop and started oscillating but you let it to an idle lean and as the engine warms up and the idle drops, vacuum leaks become even more uh, important or critical. So, just doing a visual inspection, a ton of vacuum hoses. Let's go for the big fish. So, big hose right here, PCV, and big hose right here is the brake booster. Okay, now, PCV system. Where is the PCV valve? All I see is a hose connected from the valve cover to the intake manifold. And I looked online, there's no PCV valve on this system, supposedly, all data doesn't really explain if it's there or not, doesn't show it on any pictures, we don't see it on our vacuum diagram, we just see this hose. So my question is, is there free flow between, you know, if we detach the hose here, if I blow into here, Take the oil cap off. That's just open to the crankcase. Straight up open to the crankcase. Okay? Now what about this side? I don't feel any restrictions there. I think that's just open to the intake manifold. So are you telling me there's full intake manifold vacuum in the crankcase? That would be pretty insane. There might be an orifice in there. But what I want to do is you know, start it up. You can feel for excessive vacuum in the crankcase. I just want to pinch this hose off. Right? Easy to do. Just pinch it off, let the car warm up to its operating temperature. And then unpinch it and see if it stalls out. That would be a pretty definitive test if uh, that's working or not. Alright, car is running. So I'm going to pinch it off. I'm just going to lightly close this. I don't want too much pressure to build up in there. There's definitely some pressure building up in there. Let's try it again. Okay. 
So the vacuum on that port isn't full vacuum, so I'm not worried about that anymore. Um, let's try the brake booster hose. Can we squeeze that safely? I think so. Warms up. Maybe one of these vacuum valves is uh, opening up and too much evap. EGR. I'm sure it's not EGR because we unplugged the the valve here. Now, could there be EGR flow? Could the valve be slightly, partially stuck? It could, but this pipe is just stone cold. So. You know, I don't think EGR gases are getting to, to here. We can always pop this off and install a block off. <clears throat> but what the heck? Okay, I got my makeshift block off installed on the EGR pipe. Will it make a difference? No idea. It really doesn't like warm start. Will it run any better? It's a little slow to rev up. Still? Nope. That wasn't it. What the heck? So I'm looking at the distributor timing. Okay, should take a closer look at those marks on there and make sure we're looking at the right thing. Alright, so for the ignition timing procedure, there's supposed to be three notches in this harmonic balancer right in the middle ridge. First one, so this is going to be TDC, this is 10 degrees before TDC and this is like 15 because they say after you take out the jumper wire, Timing should now be 16 degrees before top dead center at idle for the manual transmission. It should be right there at idle. And if we plug in the jumper, it should be at 10, which is that second notch. Okay? So, someone already marked the notches, obviously. So it should be on that middle one when we have the jumper in, but it won't stay running with the jumper. So, let's see if just at idle if it's on the first one. Alright, so right now, with the jumper off, it's on the first notch. A little retarded, I guess. Okay, so how do we check fuel trims without scan data? Well, Let's think of a way. So the multimeter here is on the oxygen sensor signal wire and my test light is connected to battery positive. So if it finds the ground, it's going to light up. I can use this to pull up the oxygen sensor signal and then we'll see how the computer reacts. I want to keep the idle or keep the engine speed stable, do that experiment and see if it starts running better or if it starts running worse. So that'll tell us, are we pegged lean or rich? So the oxygen sensor idle is always just stuck lean. Now is that, is it lying or is it not lying? If we pull that signal up, the computer's like, oh, time to subtract some fuel. And it'll start subtracting fuel. And if it was running rich, you know, in real life, then it'll run better. If it was already running lean, it'll just stall out. So let's do that quick experiment. All right, they got the throttle propped open. Reading zero. Let's pull it up, see what happens. Worse and worse and worse and worse. Okay, so 
closed loop now, it finally got there. We're running, running nice. Let's let off. Lean, 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 lean. So it's in, indeed, it's running too lean. Ah. It's stalling out because it doesn't have enough gasoline. Either vacuum leak or this airflow sensor is not reporting appropriately. I mean, it's a freaking flap in the airstream. So, I'm going to hook my scope back up to that and the oxygen sensor. When you, when you rev it up, you would think you would see more of a change in voltage on that, you know, on that output. When it's fully closed, when your engine's off, it's like, what, 2 volts, and then it goes up to 7? But then it only goes up to like 7.5 when you punch it. So it, that's kind of weird. So I pulled out a spark plug just to look at it. And it's definitely not black and sooty like it would be running super rich. This thing's running lean. That's why I can't keep running. Not enough fuel. Oxygen sensor proves that. It takes a lot of, you know, pumping the throttle to even get it to react. And when we pulled that signal up, the computer started taking fuel away. So it was at the limit, at the maximum limit of fuel trim, trying to add fuel to get this oxygen sensor to respond. And if it takes any more away, it'll run even worse. So we're definitely dealing with a lean condition, at least at idle. Uh, we could take it for a rip. It, you know, it does get into closed loop eventually, but I still think it's at that high fuel trim limit where it's adding more than it should. Probably based on the vein airflow meter. So during your diagnosis, it's always a good idea to just pause, collect your tools, organize some stuff, regroup, and think, what did we just learn? What explains all these symptoms? So, um, I'm confident that at high idle or you know in the throttle range, we're basically at the max of that fuel trim table. It does go into closed loop eventually, but you're right at the max. If we connect the uh, the jumper at the diagnostic connector to like check ignition timing, check idle speed, that sets the computer into base mode where it ignores the oxygen sensor. It you know closes off everything, it sets the ignition to base whatever 10 degrees, and therefore the car stalls out because the fuel trim goes right back to zero and the car can't even keep running, not even close. You can only keep running when the fuel trims are maxed out. Also, I think when the throttle is fully closed, you know that little contact closes and tells the computer, hey, we're idle. Um, on this system, it seems like it also goes back to default mode where it doesn't look at the oxygen sensor because it's a single wire sensor and they're only really effective when there's enough hot flow, hot exhaust gas is heating them up. At idle, there is very little exhaust flow, especially on this little tiny um, four cylinder that again, I think it drops the fuel trims to zero and therefore, the call, that's what the customer is saying, like, hey, it's running, and then it's like, boo. And then you tap the throttle, and it goes back to its fuel trim table, and then, you know, it responds. So we're dealing with a lean condition. This is the main input for the computer for the pulse width. So I think this is, this is going to be the last experiment here, is maybe take off this hose. We can take off the entire sensor. It's not, it shouldn't be too hard to remove. It just has like three big support brackets because it's a massive thing. Uh, and then once we get this off, I want to see what, what is the full range of the sensor on that wire. So we'll scope that. And then we can actually manually, let's say, you know, open up the plate a little bit and see if the computer starts adding more fuel and if the oxygen sensor goes rich. Because you, you wouldn't be changing the actual airflow here, you'd just be changing the signal. So, on a hot wire, you couldn't really do that unless 
you you know electrically pull the signal up or down. But here mechanically we can do it with you know with your finger, stick it in there, push the flap in and out, and then see if the computer reacts. Maybe there's a weak spring in here. Uh, well, it's not reading enough air, it seems like, but we have to focus on this vein airflow sensor. Alright, so let's just take this thing on a test drive and monitor the air fuel system. Four channels. Channel 1, blue trace, is on the TPS. Channel 2, red trace, is on that vein airflow sensor signal. Channel 3, oxygen sensor. Channel 4, injector uh, control wire. And then on the Pico channel, we can use the math channel to graph the pulse width. I want to see how this thing runs in closed loop, open loop, you know, across the board, while driving, and it's a pretty classy setup. We've got that zip tied there, Pico on the headrest, and laptop. So let's take it for a spin. All right, we got four channels set up. TPS looks good, vein airflow, oxygen sensor is still a zero, and inject your pulse width. Take it for a spin. So it's running. And you see it cuts fuel when the RPMs get too high because I bumped up the bypass air screw so it wouldn't stall out. Oxygen sensor right here, it was oscillating. Now it's stuck zero. TPS goes from about half a volt. To wide open throttle is about you know four volts. We want it to stall here. Vein airflow, I just don't like at all. It's going from about seven to maybe uh, eight point six volts. That that range is just terrible. You would think it would be like zero, you know, half a volt to 4.5 or something. Or if it's a 12 volt sensor, at least to like 10 volts. Well, let's take it for a rip, see what happens. So during steady cruising, oxygen sensor is oscillating, so we're in fuel control. If I punch it, wide open throttle, Actually went rich that time. Interesting. So this is when the engine's uh, doing the surging, uh, as in you know ramps up the RPMs, then it fuel cuts to bring the RPMs down, and then it repeats over and over again. This is a very good scenario to see what's happening to our pulse width on the injector, what's happening to our airflow. As the engine speeds up, we should have more airflow. And you can just barely see this on the VAF signal. I mean, it's, it's barely, it's not even changing. And then when the fuel cut happens, the engine slows down, then you get just a slight drop in the airflow. I really don't like this signal. It's not really changing much except for when you 
you know, really rev up the engine. It'll go up by like a tenth of a volt. I mean, 300 millivolts right there. 3.2 to, or 7.2 or 7.3 to 7.5. 300 millivolts and you can see there it actually reaches closed loop but I think it's still on the maximum edge of the fuel trim table so this signal should be higher the red signal should be higher at least at idle you know when we're driving it hard I think it went up to like 8 volts and again the oxygen sensor would catch up I, I, I think it's, this signal is just skewed. It's wrong. We have to take the sensor off and see what's going on. Okay, so we got really good data from this test drive. On the way back, I just went full throttle here, extended full throttle to like 5,000 RPM just to see what would happen. It actually stayed rich, which is good. And the... Um, Vein airflow sensor went up to 8.7 volts. So I want to write down the ranges of the signals, you know, from idle to wide open throttle high RPM. So TPS goes from 0 0.4 to 4.4, that's fine. Vein airflow meter, uh, 2.5 key on, engine off, 7.2 at idle, 8.7 absolute maximum at this wide open throttle event. Okay? Oxygen sensor does go from 0 to 1 volts and then injector 3.5 milliseconds at idle to 13 milliseconds wide open throttle 5000 RPM. That's what I was measuring right here. So if you measure the pulse width thirteen milliseconds and we're running at 4600 RPM. It pulled nice. Uh, you might ask why aren't you measuring from here to here for the RPM. Well that's because these are batch fired so you get basically one firing event for two um, actual Revolutions of the crank, uh, you know, crankshaft. <clears throat> That's a four, four-stroke engine, so you get one, one uh, injector pulse for two revolutions. So that's our RPM. You can multiply that times two, so about forty-eight hundred. So what's the deal? Why is this thing lean? At idle like right here I think it almost stalled out oxygen sensor never goes rich at idle so it's either still vein airflow sensor is under reporting at idle or we do still have a vacuum leak somewhere we can smoke test the intake see if um, I just don't know. If it runs fine otherwise, the vein airflow meter is doing what it should. Uh, we can look up some service info, see if they give us voltages. I doubt they would, but we can try. Okay, like I suspected, these ranges are not very helpful. So there's battery positive. Then VCE2. So VC is after this little resistor. That's like the supply voltage to the sensor. And the computer knows what that is. 6 to 10 volts. Wow. Um, VSE2, measuring plate fully closed, key ignition switch on, 0 0.5 to 2.5 volts. So we have, we're right at the maximum, 2.5 volts. And then engine running, Measuring plate fully open, 5 to 10 volts. Well, at wide open throttle, we're at 8.7. So we're within all the parameters, but it doesn't mean this thing's working right. 
VSE2 idling 2 to 8 volts. In an idle, we're at 7.2. Okay. We can pop that hose off and just play around with that flapper, I guess. Alright, let's do a little experiment here. So, here's the vein airflow meter. You can see, as a flap, it is a little corroded, but that shouldn't stop it from working. So as I open the flap, you notice the fuel pump kicks on. That so you know that circuit is definitely working. And so with the key on, we're at 2.5 volts. Okay, that's our baseline. I'm going to open it slowly all the way. We're going to see what the voltage goes up to. Let's see four. We're at six. So at idle, we're right around seven. And then at wide open throttle, it goes up to eight, about eight volts. Keep in mind the car's not running, we could hook up a battery charger. No glitches or dropouts. There's the whole sweep. So idle, we're right around 7.2 volts. Okay. And I'll show you on the how far I have to open the flap to get to 7.2 volts. Right around there. That's idle. So that's more than half the travel. And then the usable range from here to wide open, that's where the sensor lives. So right here, if it's not reporting enough air, maybe it should be out here. Did that explain our lean condition? I don't think so because <clears throat> if anything, if the spring was broken, it would be too far open. That would cause a rich condition. And the spring, it feels really nice and Smooth. Maybe the potentiometer in there is not is a little off. But at higher RPMs it seems to be pretty happy. It's you know does reach closed loop. It is rich eventually at wide open throttle. But at idle it's just dead lean. So next step we can put a smoke machine in the intake track and just see if any smoke comes out. Anything obvious. Alright, let's turn on the smoker. The only thing I see leaking slightly is the EGR modulator. I don't know if that's supposed to happen. So the smoke is coming in through these two reference lines. And if I plug those off, definitely drop we're basically this thing is really airtight. So the only leak is at this modulator. That's a variable. All right, so I basically just loop this line over those two vacuum lines. They both go to the throttle body, so not worried about that. I just want to eliminate this vacuum leak. Okay, let's, uh, let's run the car, reinstall the vein airflow sensor, see if anything changed at all. I mean, would that small of a vacuum leak affect this thing? Maybe. We don't know until we eliminate it.
install out. One, two, three, four. All right, so I got the car. Idling mostly happy. That's what the TPS sensor adjusted so it doesn't see that idle state. Minimum TPS is like 0.6 now instead of 0.45. So this car, whenever it sees the idle input from the TPS, it just dies. I'm really suspecting some damage inside that computer. I want to get it apart, do a visual inspection on it because we've checked everything else. Well this might look a little violent but we got to do what we got to do. Only one of eight screws was friendly. The other ones are completely corroded in. That's not a good sign for electronics. I'm afraid this is not looking very good. Let's see what's on the back side. Uh, I think we can just take out those screws and hopefully this whole thing will pop out. Try to get these screws out. Let's drill these out too, why not? Well, I'm thoroughly amazed that this engine computer still functions like 98% <laughs> because it's just insane. Everything is crusty. There's no green crusties or I don't see anything like completely broken. The caps actually look okay for 1987. But this thing needs to be like put in a bath of deoxid or something and cleaned up because if any of those sense contacts, if they bridge like down here, over here, this thing won't work. So I'm going to try to clean it up and see if anything changes. Well, the owner told me to look in the box. He's got a spare ECM from a 1985 MR2 manual trans. It has this cooling relay attached to it. For a cooling fan, apparently. Cooling fan. Anyways. Why don't we just plug this in and see what happens, because it might rule out the problem. Alright, here goes nothing. We got the 85 ECM plugged in. Same four channels. Let's see if it even starts and runs. Now keep in mind that TPS is reset. Let's set that back to the factory spec. It seems to be happy right now. Alright, so throttle adjusted, so a close throttle. We're at 425 millivolts. So the idle switch should be on. Let's see. Okay, it's happy now. Let's see what happens here. Hey, check it out. The vein airflow reading is now a lot lower as 6.5 volts instead of 7.2. And we're not even down to the low idle yet. Bingo. Yeah, so huge difference here. Huge difference. Look at where our mass airflow sensor is reading now. Down at 5.8 instead of 7.2. Look at the engine response. Sounds right down. It's super stable. That's it. You need a new engine computer. Holy crap. And look, our oxygen sensor is right around 500 now. Not running lean anymore. 
about 300 millivolts. Raise the RPM up. Boom, right there, right back. Okay, let's uh, double check the ignition timing and the idle speed. Call this car done. Bonus footage, we'll do the cruise control. All right, so let's shut it off. Restart it. Unbelievable. Let's put in that jumper, do ignition timing, and idle speed. All right, with the jumper installed, our check engine light just blinking the one. So no code stored. Looking at ignition timing, we're at about five degrees before top dead center, so we can bump that up to 10. Let me, uh, let me do that real quick. Then we'll adjust the idle speed to 800 RPM, we're done. All right, let's dial in this RPM. The ignition timing is perfect. I just tweaked it a little bit, advanced it a hair. So we're looking at our injector pulses. How do we calculate RPM from injector pulses? Um, so right now, we move the time cursor to this injector pulse. You see you're at 500 RPM, but these injector pulses occur half as often as the RPM. So I want, um, you know, we can bisect it and say, right here, we're at about 1,000 right now, yes. We want to be at 800. So basically, I want the 180 to be at that marker, and we want this injector pulse to go to the 360. So we slow down the engine until that injector pulse goes to the 360 by turning that idle screw in slowly. There we go. Now keep in mind, this is base timing here. With the... With the jumper installed. Let's see what our RPM gauge reads. Yep, right around 800. So that's fixed. Let's unhook the jumper. See the idle came up a little bit like it should. Let's try a throttle response. Right back down. Satisfaction. But why didn't the customer tell me he had a spare engine computer in the box? Because that was the first thing we noticed was green crusties in the engine computer. If, um, if I knew he had the spare one, I would just would have plugged it in to begin with to have at least a known good engine computer in the car. Ended up being a bad engine computer. Or at least corroded. You, can, you might be able to clean that one up. It might come back to life. We see the um, that vein airflow now at idle. Look at that. It's down at four and a half, not seven, like the other one was. Perfect. 